we rolling? Here we are in New Jersey, the Garden State, capital of America. Can you pan over here and have a look? We're going fishing for bowfin. Minnesota, we call them dogfish. Out here, they call them pine jacks, bowfin, culprits. We're going to make some steak, pan seared in a brand new carbon steel pan. We have a very special guest that we'll be introducing soon. <laughs> I'm Nate P. This is Shore Lunch. Got a special guest on Shore Lunch today. I'm super fucking stoked. Fishing editor, Lord of Fishing Writers. Field and Stream Magazine, Outdoor Life, Saltwater Sportsman, River Dogs, River Bottom Muck Hunters, The Man, The Myth, the host of Cut and Retie, formerly a meat eater, my good pal Joe Cermelli. Joe, Joe honey. Ahoy Nate. <laughs> Here I am. It's so good to see you again uh, since I've seen you on my futon this morning. Yes. And it was the most beautiful, well-rested night of sleep I've had in at least a day. The finest house guest I've ever had. Thanks, Joe. Don't go home. Welcome to Shore Lunch. Thank you. I am honored to be here. I'm a huge fan of yours. Thank you, as I am with you. You got a uh, tall slim and an average size fat right next to each other. Tell us what we're gonna be doing today. So we're gonna be doing a little uh, chunking, we like to say. Dirty, chunking. dirty chunk baits of shad on the bottom for bowfin. Some other names for bowfins. Grinnell, dogfish, shoe pick in Louisiana. Shoe pick. I've heard cypress trout, mud trout. Yeah. Um, that's all I got. What do you think a bowfin should be called? Maybe you could leave that in the comments. And why don't we uh, do a little rig rundown? Rig rundown. I'm on. Fucking sure lunch. I have to do this. <laughs> Joe, what do we got here? So this is this is my bowfin rig here, which a lot of bowfin connoisseurs in other parts of the America okay. uh, will disagree with, but this is why I like it, because this particular spot, it's barely six inches of water we're gonna be casting. This is the uh, Little Joe pole float. What this will do, right, is it'll lay flat out there. Okay. And what I've found is that you can read this. In other words, like if it stands straight up and yeah. doesn't move, probably a snapping turtle. Gotcha. If it bobs in place for a while, probably a painted turtle. Okay. If it goes sideways uh, through the water in a fast pace, Yeah, that is usually the bowfin. I use 30 or 40 pound leader, and that's not so much because we need that for the bowfin, yeah. but because there are so many snapping turtles here, I can anticipate reeling some in, and I want my damn bobber back. You don't want to be grabbing straight braid if you got to cut something off. Gotcha. So uh, this is actually more so I have something to grab if need be. Just a long shank, uh, regular bait holder, and I tend to buy inexpensive hooks. Again, the bowfin don't really care, and you're going to lose some to turtles. When we get a fish on, yes. what do I do? So a lot of times I've found that uh, like these bowfin will pick up a, a chunk of bait and they'll like munch on it as okay. they swim away and they're like sort of working it back into the throat. Feed them a little longer than you think. Okay. Give them some time to run around with it. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna reel down okay. fast. And the second you feel resistance, the second you feel weight, that's when that's when you give them the berries. They have a hard mouth, and they're often not as not pinned as good as you think they would be. Gotcha. So you give them a little bit of slack. Yeah. And that hook will fall right out. And we're going to be using one of these big, disgusting, smelling American shad. That was right next to the hot pockets oh, in the old garage fridge. God, there. Eric, smell this. I'm not kidding. The Delaware River here is one of the few rivers where you're actually still allowed to keep American shad because okay. the numbers are good. So I stockpile these all spring because they just make excellent catfish bait, bowfin bait. Uh, they are, are violently stinky. We're very near where uh, Washington crossed the Delaware. When they were in Camping Valley Forge, not to go all history and dying, the run of these fish is what saved Washington's army. It was a fall, fall spring. spring. In February, it warmed up and they ran up the Schuylkill River in Philly. Oh God. And uh, that's why we're not uh, eating tea and strumpets right now. He's gonna hook it real nice, get it all the way through the skin. And then I like it a little bit back out of the skin and we're gonna get, get rid of those scales. Get scale off. Can I borrow a clown rag yet? Oh yeah. This is, have you this seen is, clown rag before, I've Joe? I've seen clown rag many times. This is like, um, it's like holding the Shroud of Torin. Does it smell as you'd expect? It's, oh man, <laughs> what an honor. <laughs> Send it that direction as far as you can. People have this notion that bowfin live in mucky, polluted places, so if there's an abundance of bowfin, uh, it must be sort of nasty, undesirable water. It's actually the opposite. They need very healthy, specific conditions to thrive. Mm -hmm. So if you have bowfins in your water and they suddenly disappear by means other than people taking them out and killing them, yeah. that's a bad thing. Yeah. That means something is off in the ecosystem. All right, that's, that's fish right there, dude. Pick it up. That's, that looks fishy to me. Pick it up. Open, Open the, the bail. bail. Oh, yeah. Give him plenty of time. He's munching. You see the bobber going? The speed is what gives it away. A turtle's not going to move that fast. Sure. Let him munch. Let him munch. 
Not an exact science, dude. Even when you give him time to munch and you think it's plenty. Yeah. Reel down, and if you, the second you feel resistance, you whack them and keep them coming. Real fast, fast, real fast. There no, we go, got it. Reel, don't stop reeling. Oh yeah, don't that's stop a good reeling. fish, dude. Don't stop reeling. <sighs> don't stop reeling, don't give him anything. Don't give him anything. Oh, yo, oh, oh, shit, he spit it. So for one, these things happen. <laughs> that's, ex that's, ex that's extremely common. Here you go, bud. Perfect. It's not 9 a.m. or anything. Cheers, buddy. Cheers. Yep, there it goes. Okay, we got a fish on out there. It's kind of hard to see. Pick is it, it moving? Yep, that's fish. He's taking the line. So this time, when, you, when it's time, reel until you feel him and then set him. Okay, yep, there it goes. Nice fish. It's like a torpedo. All right, man, reel down on him. Are we ready? Let's give him a go. Let's give him a go. Reel down quick as soon as you feel weight, jack him. There we Keep go. Keep him coming, nice one, nice one. All right, got it. Is that a snakehead? Nope. Oh, look at it. Awesome. Whoa. You got yeah, it, baby. Ooh, feisty. Oh, my goodness. Take that from okay. Me. That's the bowfin. Beautiful. These fish are prehistoric. Plasticine, uh, somebody's going to yell at me because I don't know the era. It's very old. They haven't changed in millions of years. We got one. Look at how Eric's beaming behind the camera right now. I Broke my streak of being skunked. We got a new, beautiful fucking bull in here. Our pal Joe really, uh, you tootled me. I tootled you. You did some tootling. I love you. Smell his breath. Neat fish. Okay. See you later, bud. Episode 24, Shoreland with Nate P. My whole aura is quivering. Okay, so Patreon, we got, you can do one dollar. Aren't you saying that wrong? Isn't it Patreon Pat for you? Yeah, Patreon. Patreon. You could do one dollar, three dollars, nine dollars, twenty-five dollars, or a hundred. And if you do a hundred dollars, then you're a legendary legend and we mention the name of you. Brian Stormo. Anyhow, join us on Patreon. It'd be a lot of fun for you. You get some great bonus content. Oh, something just tapped mine. Oh, fuck. Don't fall. That's going to be another one. It's all right, God, reel down, try him. Reel till you feel weight and hammer him. Keep going, keep oh, going, yeah. keep reeling, got keep him, reeling, keep reeling. I don't know how good of a set you got. Ah, oh, fuck. That's what I was worried about, but that's okay. That's all right. Oh yeah. Took the bait off. Cut the bait right now, come on. <laughs> it's not moving fast, though. Uh -uh. I like speed. Now you listen to me tell you what to do here, okay? Tootle me. Often Let her go. That way. Let her go. Oh, see? See? Missed see it. what I did there? Yeah. That's how they do you. Dirty. Let it soak. Not sure yet. That's a YTBD. Yet to be determined. <sighs> Look at him move. Mm, still YTBD. You think that might be a turt? Might be a turt. Yeah, he's got a little little steam, but I don't see any shake. I like that little pop up. Give him a shot, dude. All right. I'm 50-50. Turtle. Oh, turtle. 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 This is the bycatch. This is the inevitability yeah. of this. And this is why I use 30 and 40 pound leader. You can chill there if you want. Stay as long as you, I'd rather you here than out there eating my yeah, baits. Yeah, no kidding. What a neat animal. You just, oh, did you see him take a big deep breath out of his schnoz and go yeah, under? Yeah, he's gonna bury himself right there. Oh, fuck. Well, Fucking Whoa. hell, dude. Oh, 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 oh. This is in, this is insanity. Bonus snakehead. Holy shit. Woo. Whoa. See what I like to do while I'm waiting on the bowfin to bite is throw the frogus around and uh, sometimes good things happen. You get a little snaky action. This fish though is what got me into bowfinning. If it wasn't for these invasive fish being in these swampy places, I wouldn't be back here chasing the native bowfin. These fish are so angry. They clamp down so hard. Years ago, right, when these first got here, it was mandatory to kill them. Really? And it has come around now where as long as you are not transporting them live and releasing them right back to where, from whence they came, yeah. we can put this fish back. Fun. Easy, bro. You got to kiss this guy now, Joe, right oh, on yeah. the damn lip. Oh, boy, you're beautiful. Feed it, baby. Feed the beast. Cause that is a big chunk of bait I just put on there. If you don't catch it, I get to take care. I get to take over your fishing empire. Oh -ho! yeah, dude. Insta bite on Insta -bite. that. Insta bite. Nice work, my man. 
Oh, and he's got the eye. Yeah. Beautiful. That's the that's the false eye. Is that a male the female male thing? Female thing. Yeah. So who has the eye? I believe it's the male. Okay. Or it's the female. It's one or the other. Leave that in the comments. <laughs> Whoa. Oh. Thanks, little friend. Uh, no, oh, dude. No, bullshit. that's a fish. Jump on it. Jump on it. There we go. Oh, fuck yeah. The old Mudville mud puppies over here. Come on, baby. Get out of them there weeds. Yeah. Now, does this one have the spot? Nope. No spot. That, I believe, is a female or male. Whoa. Ho, ho, ho. Try, try, try to understand. He's a magic man. man. The action's been hot hot, hot, and I've developed a serious hungus bungus. Joe, first things first, can you grab me that pan out of that bag? I can. I'd Look like at to... this. This is like from, Isn't that nice? this is like from Graceland. It, oh, oh, what's that there? A tiny clown. What is that? Another small clown ride. Look, just for you. This is for me? Yeah, that's for you. Like I can keep this forever? Yeah, you get like your no, own clown like rag. Like no gives these backsies? What do you think about that? Oh <laughs> my God. That, get I your love own it. clown rag, Thank bud. you. Yeah. I'm going to have it in my back pocket. I'll do the back pocket. Do the back thing. pocket. And now I'll also gift to you. Oh, some black gloves. The black gloves. All right. When Nate here was on my podcast, uh, he got out of me that my weakness was cooking steak. So he said, if I ever come out here, and here he is, I'm going to tootle you on how to make a beautiful steak. That's why this is happening. These are some nice local, let's call them New Jersey strips. Salt the shit out of these. Okay, I like that. It's gonna draw out some of the moisture that's in that steak, and B, it's gonna help us build a really nice crust. How do you feel cooking on the old shore lunch with Nate P. show? I did fantastic. I'm gonna cut this into even discs, half inch to three quarter inches wide, because we're gonna boil these guys. As soon as I get them all in, I'll have you start that timer, okay? Yes, sir. Standing by. 10 minutes, you said? Yeah, carbon steel. It's the first time we've used it on shore lunch before, actually. Performs much like a cast iron. Did you know the steel uh, cables of the Brooklyn Bridge and Golden Gate were made here, where we oh, are now? Very interesting. Trenton, New Jersey. Haven't done a thing here since, but that was a good thing we did. We have a lot of dollar trees now, though. So the next thing we'll do is we're going to prepare this rice flour. It's going to give a nice crisp to these potatoes. So I'll have you liberally salt and pepper that, please. And think about how much flour is in there. So you really want to salt the hell out of it. Now, same thing with the pepper. Get it all nice and mixed up. We're going to take the uh, olive oil here. We're going to take a little bit of this lemon. We do it like this to collect the seeds if any seeds fall. This red wine vinegar from the Cermeli pantry. We're not going to get a full emulsion. No. But we're going to get it as incorporated as we can. We've got about 200 degrees here. So let's just say we're poaching these guys. Okay. Okay. We're poaching these potatoes gently. Okay. He turned the heat off. Now he's going to bring these out. Just put them right down. He's going to dry these guys off. Oh, yeah, dude. Like the sizzler. 1,005, 1,006, 7, 8, 29, 30. Look at this. Yeah. One. Wow. Two. Three. And next one, we'll get the timer going. We're going to flip these every 30 seconds. 22, 23, until we get to build up a beautiful crust. A flip. Starting a new one. I might do this uh, 15 times or so. Three, two, one. Flip it. Flip. They're at 71 right now. Well, we'll pull them Fantastic. at 120. Flip. Flip. Flip time. Flip. 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 We're pulling these really soon here. Now this might be the final flip. Just one adding up. a little bit of butter here. Not much. We're just gonna add a little bit of that little crust <laughs> garlic clove. Start dredging these potato pieces and that flour. I just temped them and they were at 110. They are done, done, done. We're having real troubles here getting this table nice and leveled out. We found a, a nice uh, driftwood root ball. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's sort of level. Okay, we're gonna add in the rest of this canola oil. Okay. I'm adding these to the pan here. We're just giving these a little shallow fry. Look at this oil here. It's oil, it's butter, and it's be rendered beef fat. Essenced with garlic. Oh. Maybe three to four minutes aside. Okay, I'm gonna pull these out. The reason I did them in two batches is so I didn't overcrowd the pan and cool down the oil. Got it? A nice drizzle of that nice, beautiful mm. vinaigrette. Did you ever do this on your steak? Lemon on steak? Give me a... No, I've done horseradish. 
This just brightens things up a little bit. I dig it. You're going to thank me. That is genuinely one of the best, tenderest, most buttery, delicious pieces of steak I've ever put in my mouth. Mm. Not kidding. You know what a mark is for me? You know how people slather their steaks in the A1 sauce mm. and things? Mm -hmm. When it's done where you don't need any of that because the flavors are just incorporated by the pan and what you did there, that's perfection. And this needs nothing. There's a little crunch on the outside and it is as tender as a mother's love. I haven't tried a potato yet. You're gonna like the potatoes. The potatoes are bang on. Eric, should we do a little fork cam? Yeah, it out. Do I get to fork cam? Oh yeah, fork cam today is brought to you by our friends over at El Diablo Guitars and Amps. If you're ever in the Twin Cities and you need cool, retro, new, hard to find guitar pedals, guitars, or amplification, you need to go to El Diablo. You go, bro. I just want to say before I do that, yeah. between just having you here to fish, uh, my own personal clown rag, and Beautiful. now the fork cam, I'm just, I'm the luckiest boy this side of the Rockies. <laughs> Look them up online, El Diablo. They will satisfy and satiate any of your musical needs. This bite's perfect. Just watching you do the, the 30 second flips, that's something that was never on my radar. Flipping, 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 and you're temping, 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 temping. Today has been an immaculate success. First thing we caught was a snakehead before we were technically rolling. Then the I show. caught a bowfin. Then I caught a bowfin. Then I caught a bowfin. Then I caught a snakehead. And then we caught a whole bunch of turtles. Oh, yeah, we caught a bunch of turtles. We're full. We're, my arms are sore from wrangling and fish. I want to thank my pal. Joel C. I, dude, I gotta say, I love your show. I am honored to be on it. I mean that, truly. Seriously. I'm so glad you guys are out here. That's nice to hear. Thanks for inviting us yes. out here. Thanks for bringing us out here. Until next time, my friends, this has been another fine episode of Shore Lunch with Jay Bashke. Ta-ta. I got bad fishing in my system. Bluegill gonna be my victim. I got bad fishing in my system. Walleye gonna be my victim. I got bad fishing in my system.